So I'd record a video of a game of uh, ATS's uh, Santa Maria Infante on the road to Rome, 1944. Um, I'm sorry it's a bit dark because you can see I'm like underneath there's a cupboard up here and then there's these shelves so I'm tucked away again in, in the corner of a room here so it's a bit dark. I could get um, more light on but then you're going to get even more reflection off the perspex sheet I have. Um, I just want to, because i got a few more subscribers, I'm a bit nervous about my videos now because uh, in case I've got more people watching and so, you know, I was kind of worried, am I, are, are people going to like it? Are, are they, um, uh, is this what they're expecting and so forth? So I just want to reiterate um, what my channel's about, which is essentially, because most of my gaming is solo, it's essentially kind of like as if um, somebody else is in the room, or, you know, I have a friend somewhere who's um, interested in, in what I'm gaming, they're interested in the hobby and so forth. So it's it's kind of like, a, it, it's not meant to provide um, informative digests of games for other people um, in the sense that, you know, I take a great care um, in a presentation and 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 so forth to sort of create the best thing it's more a sort of punk ethos i just pick up a camera and shoot and then i post my videos that are related to games in the game files on board game geek or the game box in, in an area there and consim world grognard um etc because um if pe you know in case people can find something from it so i'm not claiming to um you know provide definitive coverage of any game but i i will take Okay, I do take care of my reviews to sort of try and be balanced and informative. Um, but otherwise it's just kind of like, you know, uh, here's a game. This is maybe a bit about what it's about. So it's more about what comes into my mind that's interesting rather than me trying to double think what um, somebody might want in looking at coverage of a particular game. Um, so having said all that... Um, here we go. I took at this low down shot to try and give you an idea of what we've got. This is a tactical game. I understand there's a newer version called um the Bracky Mount the Bracky Hills or something like that in eighty in the ATS tabletop version. So that has smaller hexes and smaller counters of the same size hexes and counters as um advanced squad leader and so forth. This is an old version with an old version of the rules, which by the way are a bit of a mess and until someone helped me with a lot of information about the rules, present current state of the rules, that there's um I was having a disappointing experience with this game. Now I, I come back to it with a lot of help and rules clarifications and I think it's gonna be fun. But um I'll just show you the situation we've got. Essentially this is um Santa Maria Infante town on um this way is Mount Brachi, uh, excuse my pronunciation in Italian, um, and here's like a, th th sorry, yeah, so this road is going all the way back to the American start line over there where there's a, there's a um, churchyard of San Minturino or something, so essentially you can't see it so well, I'll try and take another shot in a minute with, without all the glare, there's a ridge line going all the way up here, so on on that side and this side is is low lying territory, and then there's a spur comes out from the ridge line just here. So you've got a ridge here and a spur coming out leading up to Santa Maria Infante, which is actually in ruins, obviously it's been under heavy bombardment. So the Germans are defending this part of their Gustav line, and in this scenario, well in fact in all the scenarios in, in this um, module, you have the Americans trying to come up on the ridge and there are stages of the historical attempt to break through the Gustav line at this point. So um, I've chosen the biggest scenario in the book. It's 16 turns long. Um, I chose it because it's got tanks and infantry. Most scenarios in um, this module don't have tanks. So I wanted to try out the whole system. Um, many scenarios are just sort of four, six, seven turns long with a, a little bunch of infantry and only using a small portion of the map. This uses the whole map and uh, tanks and infantry, as I said. And that brings me to one thing that I just want to mention about the module, and I, it's a great that I, I don't like, is that there's um, there's more counters than you need in the game. 
So um, I've got the biggest scenario with the most counters and I've got reams and reams of uh, unit counters. Some of them are maybe like extra infantry that I'll need in other games. But you see all these American tanks and all these German tanks units there's tons of them will never ever be used because they're not used in this game at all um they've been stuck in that box and uh, if i hadn't bought it second hand i would have been paying for those counters and there's just a little note saying they're here in case um you want to buy expansions that use those counters and for me that's like excuse me no no i understand that maybe it the, the particular reason why is because Okay, it, I think that I'm paying, especially if I'm paying for postage and so forth, I'm paying for all that extra cardboard and I'm never going to use it. You know, you can't expect me to buy expansions specifically using those counters. So that's a big no to me because it's the majority um, that are not usable rather than the minority, I would say, or at least half. Then the other um, big turn off is the fact that I don't get enough like you need, and because this is an impulse movement game, so every unit or stack, um, you have an impulse, you, you, you move or fire one unit or stack, you put a fire or a move marker on it, and then you go to the other side. So you need, a, and they take one impulse, one stack or one unit does that, and then you swap back. So you need a lot of those move fire markers to be able to mark every unit or every stack on both sides, and there aren't enough. There also weren't enough um, minefield markers for the scenario setup. Um, so the, I get extra counters I don't need. I don't get enough of the counters I do need. Now I do understand the business model and that you've got you print counter sheets in massive batches and then it's cheaper for the um, publisher producer just to chuck them in and more or less cover and maybe over cover what is needed in a game. So I understand the business model, model but um, the counter against that business model is a lot of customer dissatisfaction. I don't want more than I need of one thing and less than I need of a crucial other thing. Do you know what I mean? Why give me more instead of giving me exactly what I need for the same amount of cardboard? Yes, I understand the business model, but you've got to understand you're going to get pissed off customers if, if that's the way you do it. Um, so I think... I don't know the uh, the exact um, calculations and so forth of it, but it sounds to me like cutting corners like that is not worth it in terms of customer relations. Having said that, back to the game itself rather than um, publishing of the game, um, I'm coming back to ATS because um, I do play squ Advanced Squad Leader. I, I haven't played it for a long time, but I love it as a game. And... I tried to play ATS many years ago. I have the Streets of Stalingrad basic game as well, and I didn't get into it because of the impulse system. Um, so what I found is that as that as a as a player, especially as well, there's two things here. One is that as a solo player, it's a blimmin' drag because you 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 have to get to the mindset of one side, and then you move or fire one unit or stack. And then it's kind of like that side's turn is finished. Then you have to go back to the other side, get into that other side's mindset, move or fire one unit, and then swap again, swap again. So as a solo player, an impulse-driven um, system where it's one unit per or stack per impulse is a blooming drag as far as I'm concerned, and I really didn't like it. Then the other th problem that I had with it is is it's kind of... A bit distractive when you're trying. Well, it is distractive, and it's it's not inherently a problem with the the system, but it's kind of a problem as a gamer. Is if you're trying to mount an attack, a coordinated attack, say with you know tanks and infantry, and then another sort of some more infantry over there, the um temptation tendencies to get bogged down in that you know, you're spending all your impulses here and everything's going here and nothing much is going on in the other sides. Now, at the end of the turn, you will have moved everyone, but um, then you might have kind of like exhausted what's going on in the middle and then you go to the one s s other side and then you go to an one other side. So you sort of exhaust areas of the board. And so 
it kind of felt like, well, seeing as I'm kind of basically taking all the impulses in this area and all the impulses in that area, why, when I switch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, can't I just say, like, all these guys on this side go forward and all these guys on this side go forward in that area? So that's kind of like how I it tends to boil down to my play of it. Um, and it... Uh, so... Yeah, it was a bit harder for me to get my head around that kind of coordinated attack because I'm, you know, sort of, I'm doing stuff here and then he's responding and I think I had to respond to him and then I forget that I want to move these tanks up. So you can get distracted like that because you are you might be tempted to immediately respond, you know, like, oh, oh they're getting shot up, so I'll put, save another, pull another guy back to save him. And you're responding to what's gone there. Instead of your original plan was to those guys all move up and then your tanks move up. So that's, you know, that's not a problem with the system, but that is a, you don't have that problem when you are used to I go and then you go. So um, I wanted to give the game another try, go back to it, despite the difficulties I had with that impulse per unit stack system. Um, and and they're not. This is inherently an interesting subject to me because it's about um, Rome, about Italy, where I'm living now. Um, so I'm really happy to have a go. And uh, like I, I mentioned, when I started with a version one point nine five rule book, I it was proving a difficult experience because let's have a look around. Um, okay, so there's Santa Maria Infante on the right there. There's um. I've got some weapons pits here, and did I put a bunker? No, I've got weapons pits and uh, trenches there. And then there's some people hiding the shell holes. So i got an anti-tank gun, machine guns, and a stug, and some infantry there. Sorry, you didn't see that. It's all there. Um, then there's a line of... Um, <coughs> excuse me, this is a line of mines here. And in front is a line of wire. Again, there weren't enough wire counters to cover it. And most of these is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven anti-personal mine counters. And I think four um, uh, vehicle mine counters. Not enough. Um, but anyway, so I bodged them up with some other counters. So I've got a line of mines and wire there. And then um, trenches, trenches, trenches. And I... These black dots mark victory locations. So I've got a bunker here, um, a bunker here, and a bunker here. So that black dot should be on that thing. Then just a mine there, some mines here to block the gaps, weapons pits. Okay, so um, that is my Gustav line. The idea being that there's a short bit of. So this is this is another small spur out. So there's a bigger spur down near the village or town here there's another small spur out here then the rest of the ridge goes back there i've left a little gap there so the idea being that to channel the american attack through there because um back here i have um this unit is still hidden it's an anti-tank gun there's an anti-tank gun there that that was hidden that started opening fire it's taken out one or two tanks i can't remember got machine guns and then we got um some hidden uh infantry there they should th again there should be markers to mark that they are hidden set up there's no markers i got tanks i don't need but <laughs> enough of that complaint okay so i got a couple more units hit, set up hidden here one's hidden in this um the sole like wheat field there uh there's another hidden in some trees there but otherwise this is kind of like there's a bit of a valley um, there's a green valley there. You've got a, cr a ravine coming up here. So the, if the Americans try coming up in that ravine, they're going to have to go through the wire and the um, mines there. Otherwise, they, they plow along the road into my uh, bunker areas here. Um, so the reason why this was proving disappointing is that the rules about bunkers are really unclear and confusing because um, if you're in a bunker, you can be in what's called full cover. And again, the rules, they sort of, they have bits dotted here and there. So the rules for full cover in relation to off-board artillery or indirect fire is in one section. Then the rules for full cover themselves are mentioned of direct fire in another section. And then there's some rules for full cover in the bunker section. And trying to put it all together and make sense of it was not working. And so originally when I played it, full cover meant that... Um, uh, you're either in what's called improved cover 
looking out of the bunker and then you can fire you can opportunity fire on units moving up but you only get a sort of two shit column shift on the casualty table which isn't much so it'd be very easy um although it's the biggest column shift you can have but it's still not much with the casualty table in ats it's quite a bloody game so it's meant to be fast moving but basically as a machine gun crew it hidden in a bunker they were going to be decimated really quickly i should just mention there's um two other bunkers here well, I say was, this bunker here has been completely demolished by 150mm off-board artillery fire. But anyway, back to the point. The point was was that if they were under direct fire, they could opt at that point to go into full cover. So they wouldn't be affected by that fire. So that shot would have been wasted. But then they could not fire back out. So essentially, they, I guess they were meant to be cowering at the bottom of the bunker, not looking out of the weapons slits. So you couldn't hit them but unless you're in adjacent and they couldn't fire at you unless you're adjacent um so effectively all, all, it, all the americans had to do was either drop artillery or fire on them with their first impulse they would have to duck down and then um that those machine guns are useless i just have to wait till the americans come up close so there's no way to hold them off which is obviously what you do with bunkers and machine guns in place in them you sit there they're really hard to be targeted and you can hold people off from a long distance so apparently the version 3.95 maybe even the present version 4 something rules um uh rectify that and basically full cover you can fire out um, so now I'm playing with those rules, it's looking like a much better game. Before it was, I was thinking this game has a lot of promise, but the rules are a mess, it's confusing and I'm disappointed. Now it's looking like it's going to be fun. So, um, yes, so this is what's happening. Can we move around here and see better what the Americans are doing? I've got a bit of a gorilla grip gantry going on here, sorry about the glare again. Um... Maybe I'll pick this off. Probably won't be able to put it back. Maybe I shouldn't pick it off. I'll struggle. This is okay. So the Americans basically they have to set up kind of past this line, and um, so some and uh, there's lots of leaders, and you need leaders to rally. They have to be in a stack to rally. So I got people sort of stacked together, hiding in clumps because on both sides have a bit of offboard artillery. Um, you can look here. Here's the American losses already. We're on game turn six or seven, I think, at 14. The Americans have already lost all this, most of it to machine gun and off-board artillery fire. And um, the Germans have only lost a few. Um, this one here is that bunker with a machine gun and a whole um, squad and a leader to rally them that was rubble there. That was a, a direct hit, not just a normal hit, but you're, if you get... You also can roll for a direct hit, and um, which rubbled that. But anyway, so the Americans, um, many of their troops were sort of bunched up here with some. Um, the uh tanks all had to sort of start in this region, so many of them they basically had to run towards the ravine to get cover, and then it's quite slow moving up. So they've been slowly moving up, and I had to um, hidden um this this unit's still hidden. It's got and uh. Panzerfausts, they only have a range of one hex. There's one there which managed to, you can see there's a burning wreck there, it took out a tank, but then they've been uh, decimated by the Americans slowly moving up. But you can see, th this is a great thing, I've got those um, machine gunners in their bunkers, they're keeping these guys pinned down in that ravine. Um, so difficult to they can sort of make a run up to the sunken road there, that will be sort of phase two, and then they'll have to make the assault, unless they can wait for um, their off-board artillery to to rubble these bunkers. The thing is, is that the off-board artillery, every turn you roll for contact, and every turn you miss contact, um, the contact is harder the next turn. It's minus one on your D10 roll. So the contact for both sides is six. They haven't, none of them have missed yet, but as you miss, it's going to be hard and hard until you won't get any more off-board artillery. So it's not infinite. So, you know, you might have to, Think carefully about your shots there. Well, we've got a bit of a gun duel between a Stug here and um, Americans have got seven M4A1s. Well, they had seven. They have had three knocked out already. Um, 
so that's that side. Then um, I thought there's some guys who move around on this side that was essentially to try and flank these two bunkers and come up behind them so that um, you know they're firing out at these guys and then we can take them out in close combat from there. But they have been held up. I didn't check out the terrain very well by the machine gun and anti-tank gun there. There's... Um, uh, some hedges along parts of, um, can we see better there? Um, sorry, it's fuzzy because of the, um, the lack of light. Yeah, I can turn the light on, but then you'll get big glare. Um, let's just try it. Does that help? No, I don't think so. Maybe create... No, sorry, if I turn that light on, I get a bigger shadow in the side here. But anyway, you can see these hedge lines. Um, some of them run along a contour and then suddenly they slip down below the contour. So this unit's in cover from a hedge here and this is in cover from the hedge here. But if he moves past this hedge, this hex, if he moves through into and through this hex, the hedge suddenly drops down to the next contour. So you can imagine these kind of like terrace slopes with, um, uh, uh, you know, like vines being grown on them and so forth. Um meandering up and down a bit so it's a bit nasty we lost a few troops trying to move them across here and actually my uh, movement around here has been terrible for the americans um i think really i should have withdrawn them and just concentrated them moving around here so that in that case that in that case we would have you know just um had to concentrate about keeping these bunkers pinned down and then that um american defensive sort of angle would would have been rendered ineffective and uh so that was about my pre-game planning as the americans to do that but <laughs> you know what it's like I, really i think the problem was i had so many americans bunched up around here i wanted them to scatter quite quickly to, um so that they weren't such easy targets for uh, the uh, 88 millimeter offboard artillery that the germans have and so um they couldn't run straight up the ridge here because of the bunkers here. There's already let lots of Americans um, down, down, down around here, um, down in this area, you know, sort of jumping into the, the ravine going, help, help, help. Um, I needed somewhere for some of them to go, so I sent them around here, and they should have waited here. Um, but instead they tried to move around and do that flanking manoeuvre, and they've been cut up. Um, but I've got... Um, so that, that uh, here, um, let's see if we can zoom in on that a bit. Yes, yeah, so you still get, don't get very good shots because I need really to come above. But so you've got tanks here with um, squads underneath. Um, so there's some protection, but there, this squad's broken. And um, they've, we've managed to put some, as the Americans put some, smoke on this bunker here so that's obviously obstructing the fire um yeah so the attack's going very slowly here and uh we're kind of like bottled up here um however so on the one hand it looks kind of like pretty grim for the americans because there's a lot of turns left and you can see um many victory locations of those black squares back there those black markers back there there's three here there's one, two, three, four, five, six there. And then there's one, at, no, sorry, then there's three in the American setup area. Okay, so they start at three victory point locations. There's one just kind of like randomly in the middle of the road here. And then there's one on this bunker here and one on this bunker here. These are two kind of like, they call them the tits, the left and right tits. So they're slight mounds. Um, on either side of the road, so prime locations for me to plonk those bunkers. The setup was um, free, you know, it's like set up within German setup area. So I could decide where to put the bunkers. I didn't have to put them there, but it's definitely the obvious place that those being um, victory locations. So the, as I was saying, the Americans, it looks pretty grim because they're getting cut up and they haven't got so very far, but they only need six or more... Um, of the following victory hexes to win the game at game end. They already have three at the start. There's one there, which is just, you know, they just have to amble past that. They've got it. There was no way I was going to 
defend that unless I plonk, say, a bunker or a weapon put in the middle of the row, <laughs> sort of right near the American setup. And then, so they, that's four, so they only need these two and hold them at the end of the game to win the game. So I find that very strange. I think. I think you need these victory um, hexes back here to to give the Americans um, more to defend because obviously if you're only defending those two you put all your wires and mines around there so I think this is essentially um, although this scenario kind of uses the whole map and so forth I think essentially it is only about this bit which is a bit strange I think this is all just deterrent deterrent to make sure that it's all about this and so I have to put as the Germans my main effort in defending one of those so that the Americans don't gain victory and I say defend because looking at the the, the, the Germans have uh, three stugs and sort of let's say 16 and uh, 24 squads versus seven um, M4A1s, American tanks, and like 33 or so squads, and then you know lots of others kind of miscellaneous like bar gunners and so forth. So it was very difficult for me to think about cobbling together a counter-attacking force on the German side because I spread out my guys to defend um, A, the, the Gustav line there, um, B, to cover the backstop here, and um, see just to um, you know have people in those victory point locations. If I'm going to counter attack, you know I've got this huge space exposed on the ridge to counter attack by. How am I going to do it? It would need to be a very impressive counter attack to have any chance of say retaking one of these. So um, I think the Americans are going to win this game quite easily. They just have to take those two. They've demolished that so they can kind of walk into there. The point is now really is I think they just need to either keep these bunkers with the machine guns that I don't think there's a machine gun in there. No, that's just a, a squad. Um, they basically got to keep those bunkers pinned. They don't have to worry so much about those on the other side of the ridge. Although, you know... But they need, once they're in that bunker, maybe they're going to be safe. I don't know. Well, maybe the thing is they might take one of those and then the um, uh, the uh, uh, Germans might be able to rubble one. Um, I don't know. I think the Americans have got the game in the bag um, sooner or later, barring disaster. So my question now is, you know, how do the... How do you defend as the Germans? Because obviously if I brought these fellows up and so they were maybe defending more around here, I could have put more weapons pits and so forth around there to defend that area. Then this whole area obviously would have been weaker and this would have been undefended. And so the Americans could just um, sweep in around there. Now the thing is the Americans don't know. As a solo player I know, but as a opposed player the Americans wouldn't know um what plan the uh, Germans had taken so they they wouldn't sorry about all this movement I'm just trying to find the best angle for a shot they wouldn't have known um so it's a bit of a game of bluff for the Germans um and uh, the bluff has been called really because they didn't they they they, they defended those but uh, when I was doing my German setup, I didn't realise properly that the Americans had three victory locations there already. Well, I think actually I did I think about it, I did remember it, but I you know I thought I'd got to defend everywhere. How do I do it? Um. Anyway, I like this setup. I I really like that setting up the line, channeling the funnel of attack here, and um. But is it going to work? We shall see. So I'll play some out and, and excuse me, come back with a report on how it's going later. Bye for now.